Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I want to talk about the subject that was actually sparked out of a different topic that I've talked about which is, is Link actually slow and you can watch that video if you want. And was driven by the comments saying how does this apply to something like Entity Framework. And the interesting thing to me is that many people, especially more junior people who just grab Entity Framework out of the shelf and they start using it, don't actually understand how it works and how it can look like Link but actually work like a database. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. And maybe the title is not exactly true because technically it is link, but it's link with a twist where we're not actually using the default query provider or the default queryable, and we actually override that to make something of our own. So in this video, I want to take a look into that deep dive into Entity Frameworks code and understand how it actually works and why it's not the same as your good old regular link on a list or an enumerable. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribing and hit the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. Now, before I dive into the code, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, the abp.io platform. ABP is an open source web application framework that fills the gap between ASP.NET Core and common business application requirements. It automates repetitive tasks by conventions and provides many useful features to make you focus on your own code rather than dealing with infrastructure concerns. You can develop anything from microservice solutions to modular monolithic applications based on the industry best practices. ABP comes with multiple UI and database options out of the box with production ready startup solution templates. They also provide commercial themes, modules and tools for the ABP framework and offer premium support and additional services for enterprise users. It is a complete development platform for modern web solutions and it's a project I'm happy recommending. To learn more about abp.io, check out the link in the description. So what do I have here? I have program.cs, which all it really does is it initializes a database and I have a, an app DB context, which only has a single a DB set, the animals DB set, and I'm using um, SQLite for this. So everything is here, the database is here. And then I have two things. Uh, I have two iterations with this link expression where I'm saying that where uh, item.name equals dog, and then to list and I'm getting the animals and I'm doing that for the DB set which is the actual database and the list that I have created over here which is empty and both of those things are empty and when I actually run them you should see them saying uh, that zero animals are in either those um, sets and just to make it a bit clearer to understand what's going on here um, I can change this to the actual type and you can see that this is a DB set and this is a list, but I'm able to apply link in both of them. And that's because the DB set is actually uh, implementing the I queryable, which is in return implementing the I enumerable. And then the list is also implementing the I list, which is implementing the I enumerable. So those both things satisfy the requirements for it to be um, used by link, which is effectively a set of extension methods. And by the way, for those of you wondering, if you had something like this, where we have like animal in animals from DB, this version of link is basically the same. That version will be lowered to this version and then they will both be lowered to extension method versions. So uh, when I'm talking about this link, it applies to the other version of link as well. It's identical. Now, for those of you who don't know, Entity Framework will actually use all the information in the DB set and the expression you attach to it, for example, the where clause here, to build a SQL query. And then on whatever you enumerated with, in this scenario, it is a two list. It will actually use that on, with a custom um, enumerable to call the database uh, with that query. And I can actually show you here the SQL because I can just copy that. And there's a method in Entity Framework that's called to query string. And if I stick a breakpoint here and I debug it, you can see that when I step over this, I get the SQL that Entity Framework will actually execute behind the scenes for me. And that's the beauty of EF. You write a link, it turns it into stuff, and then it runs those stuff, um, arguably with some performance drawback, but it's not big enough to justify not using it, in my opinion, at least. Now, with that shown, I'm going to stick a breakpoint here. I'm going to show you exactly by stepping through the code how some things are being overridden to actually support that without you having to know about them. And I'm able to do that because I can actually enable external source debug in Rider and then just debug through that code. So I've checked this option here and I'm able to do that. So I'm going to debug my code and I'm going to step into 
the let's step into the to list first the the very outer layer where we have our source and if you see our source it's not just a list it's not just a db set it is actually an entity queryable and if we see the row view here this queryable has the expression and this expression the where clause with a dog and all that and then the db context as well is what ef will use and turn it into that sql query and if i step in here we're going to go into the new list source method uh, or actually constructor and going in here since this collection is a custom implementation of an I enumerable it also has its own enumerator and the benefit of having its own enumerator means you can do whatever you want and c sharp and this code will just treat it as if there's nothing special about it it will just keep getting the enumerator moving next and adding to the result so if i step into that you'll see that here we have the custom entity query provider which is again a way to plug our own logic in here and then we can grab that and make whatever we want with it and if i go on the execute method you'll see that we actually create a query context which has all the information we need to build the query and execute the query um, well we actually are going to build that now it doesn't have it yet we're going to extract the parameters for example from the query and now this query has the the dog side as well and the argument count and you can see the arguments here and then we can compile the query and it's interesting because you can see the cache that will be used to actually cache those queries so you don't have to recompute them every time there's optimization there um, and then if we keep stepping here and the move next you will see what's going on which is that we can actually uh, check if it has next it doesn't have uh, anything so it doesn't have anything to add in here and just steps out and then we get nothing back and actually just to show you how the uh, sql query is actually being built in action if i uh, debug this again i can go into the sql query generator class and then in the visit select method i can show you how uh, it will start appending in that command builder the select statement because we're selecting there's no distinct it knows that it will use any uh, generate top expressions if needed and then eventually once we go on everything you can see that it picks up things like from uh, and generate the clauses that we need and then finally at the end we have the select expression which is what you see here and then you have the relational uh, command builder which has the query that will be executed in the database um, and then finally you build that and this is what we run now this might be uh, new for you but this isn't specific to ef there's many other packages that use that sort of technology for example um, the cosmos db sdk is using something very similar with its own document queryable it's not easy to implement your own version of a queryable and a query provider but once you do it makes especially sdks super powerful and once you learn how to implement one of those it's not as hard to implement the next one and there are some open source solutions i didn't want to bore you with implementing one from scratch but i think there's value in knowing how things operate behind the scenes and this is why you cannot compare ef with traditional link on a list let's say because they fundamentally touch completely different code except for the high level stuff that they share in common well, that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this video possible if you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.